one. Hello, you guys, and welcome to The Woman's Cave. Yes, the projector is up today, but you can't see it because they put the lighting up. Because guess what, y'all? I look like a horrid mess. I didn't go to sleep until 5 a.m. And then Jade had a meeting at 7 a.m. And I wanted to use our business car. Yes, the quote, business car. Because it feels like it's a nice luxury SUV, and it takes way too much gas. And if my earring falls off right now, I'm going to be so mad. Hold on. Hang in there. Okay, cool. We're good. We're good. It's staying on. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> so if I'm a little loopy, then it's two hours of sleep. And as you can see, there's no flask. It's not because I've been drinking or anything fun of that sort. Dang it. Can someone get me a flask? No one's moving. Oh, not a single person is moving. That is just ridiculous. I think they're all under Jade's control, and that's why I can't have liquor in the morning. Wait, no, that might be because I would be an, that would be an alcoholic if you had liquor in the morning. There's a reason. All right, anyway, I'm moving on because I'm not fun. And without Jade here, it's not fun to do banter. I'm bantering by myself, which makes me look really narcissistic. So guess what, you guys? We both book. So we've got, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. I actually said the whole title like I care, and I don't. And I thought being grown up was easy. We thought it was, and then we found out it wasn't. So then we wrote a book about it. And I thought I could juggle it all, just in case you wanted to know if you, what you were doing in business. There you go. And I thought I did my journey alone. And I thought I had it all figured out. I would come in for a close-up. Anybody want to come in for it? No, mm -mm, no one wants to come in for a close-up. Okay. So, and I have bags, so I'm glad they didn't. And I thought I had to figure it out. Look, Hollywood, I really need this as a television show. Just stop playing around and make it. I'm joking. I don't really care if you do. But if you do, that'd be great. I'd love to see that. And I thought he was the one. We all did, and then we found out he wasn't. And then, you guys, we have the beginning of our new series, The Misfit Guys, a sassy sway that leaves crooked footprints. So check that out. And yes. <laughs> Our second book, it will be out this afternoon. The Misfit Guides, The Cocktails, Soirees, and the LBD. You know, just in case you guys are thinking you got bored reading this one, we came out two in two months. Oh, I feel so special. And then we have, and I thought, the workbook. Oh, wait. And before I go on to my special guest, because we have an awesome guest from across the pond in my favorite section of England, the northern section, they have lovely accents. Mm -hmm. Memories of a beautiful man in lead. Anyway, um, <laughs> the 25 hottest indie authors, artists, and advocates. Please, you guys, go pick up a copy of our magazine. We love it. And that is Dr. Nora Charney. He's hot and he's smart. And he's hot. And he's European. Well, he's European by marriage. I don't know if that counts. Yeah, it counts. Anyway. Yeah, that's probably why it's hot. We also have Just Right in Life, the docu-series. So please watch us on channel 18 or Amazon.com. You can see us on Amazon Prime. And you know, the more you click that button, the more I get paid and the more I can have bags removed. Or no, that has to do with time, not money. Anyway, you're not here to hear about me. You're here to hear about our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, now that I took forever and a half, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Amanda Steele. I'm from U the UK, from Manchester in the UK, so that explains the accent. Um, I've got a book coming out in a couple of months. It's been published, but I'm doing some work on it and republishing it. And I've also put it out at the moment called Love Dates and Other Nightmares. Nice. So, Amanda, you write novels or poetry? Both. Oh, right. You do write both. I I remember I listened to her on the Sample Chapter podcast, and it was a good read, by the way. Very well done. And a nice section to choose. And it's a very interesting novel. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your novel? And I'm asking boring questions today. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm lazy. I'm calling it in. Um, it was inspired by an idea that my mum had um, when, like, children are kidnapped on the news, and she seems to think that there's, like, some sort of black market type thing going on with people being sold to couples that can't have children. So it just got me thinking, what would it be like if that happened and then the woman grows up? So like 15 years later, she's a grown up woman and she finds out that her family is not a family and it just changes everything and she doesn't know where she belongs in the world. Sounds like a good Lifetime movie. 
I'd watch it. <laughs> no, I can imagine. If anybody's listening, they want to make it into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only, oh, I forgot stuff. Shoot. Yeah, well, anyway. No, we have a, a friend that that's what they do. They, they hear book pitches and turn them into movies. Like she's going to show up for the book festival. Wait, you have a ticket. <laughs> you have a yeah. yeah. See what she does with it. Anyway. Yeah, well. <laughs> Come on, it would be fun. And um, you might get to spend time in the U.S. and the sun shines here a lot more. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it when it snows all the time. We've got summer now, but it snowed for like, I don't know how long. It felt like 10 years. <laughs> uh, I guess if you get further up to like Detroit and stuff and you got to shoot there, it will snow all the time. But, you know, try to get something nice <laughs> and like sunny and warm. Or even in the mid-Atlantic region where they'll be like, it's going to snow. And then it's like, fake you out. A half inch. Thought you were getting six, didn't you? Ha ha. Anyway, and we're not talking about snow. What is it like living in Manchester? Because I've visited Brooklyn and other places, and I haven't visited Manchester. So, what's that like? Yeah, it's nice. I'm originally from Bradford, which is also in the north of England, but Manchester's much bigger and there's more going on here. There's nothing going on in Bedford? Bradford. Yeah, there's nothing going on. Not really. But I visited in seven weeks. Why would you say that? <laughs> oh, well, there's nothing more going on then, what? <laughs> okay, so how far is Manchester from Bedford? I need to visit there. Um, about thirty-five miles. Thirty-five miles. Yeah. So like thirty-five minutes, an hour. Possibly, yeah. I think I think I know someone who's driven in about forty minutes when it's being quiet. So it's not it's not that far. So it's not a place you take an Uber to. No. Oh, that's highly upsetting. <laughs> An interview in Manchester, and you're like, you don't take an Uber there. I thought I could Uber. <laughs> oh well, so much for that. <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's get back on. Car <coughs> I think I'm, I'm getting Jade's cough through, through like, just spirit. Because, you know, I, she's a had bronchitis, and so I'm thinking that I might, might be getting her cough. Hmm. Anyway, moving on. Moving on, definitely. We're going to talk about your poetry. So yeah. I'm going to go with this question someone asked us before. Why poetry? Um, I did a creative writing course at half my degree, and we covered poetry on there and as we learned about like doing themes and I think I got like three themes on the subject of relationships because I was single back then and I had some really bad dates so I thought I could write a book about this so that's what I started to do and then I just developed on it and wrote a whole book. Nice, nice. So you wrote a book on relationship poetry? Yeah. Oh that is, that is ingenious. I wish we had done that. I really wish we had. It would have been a great idea. Anyway. <laughs> so, the, did you? Did any of the people who were in the books know they were in the books? No. The first part, because I only did a really short book at first, and then I added like a second part and made it longer about a year later. And now I'm in a relationship, so there's actually some nice poems in there now, as well as the bad ones. Oh. But the uh, ones for the bad dates, they don't know that I'm in there. And I did a little um, preface, and I said, if you do recognise yourself in here, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> really? You went yeah. that road? Oh. That's a bad road. No, it isn't. It's a good road. It's great. It is nothing like vengeance in the written word because it's like it says you're like immortalized as the enemy. Yeah. Bad day and again. See what happens. <laughs> the good thing is nobody's going to want to come forward and say that's me. Exactly. I used to believe that too. People wouldn't be like, that's me. And then I had an ex-husband and so, uh, no, that's not true. People would be like, oh, I'm horrible. That's me. <laughs> Really? That's that's what you wanted to do, honestly? <laughs> so, you have poetry and you have novels. What can we expect next? Um, I'm going to be releasing my book in a couple of months. And I've also got a young adult fiction book coming out, possibly at the end of the year with a different publisher. 
So you are traditionally published? Um, yeah, yeah, I will be. It's probably going to be near the end of the year, but it's in editing at the moment. Nice! Look at that, a traditionally published author. I mean, we've had traditionally published authors before, but I just love to say it. It's like, ooh, looky, looky, traditionally published. Well, I've tried both now, so I can compare both and decide which one I like better. So which one do you like better? Um, the publisher who's doing my young adult book have been quite good so far. I understand that you are redoing your first book. And then as I was formulating my question, I remembered her email and it said, do not ask. And I was like, oh, yeah, so I should not ask. Okay. Oh, <laughs> go figure. I'm going to follow instructions today. If Jade were here, she'd be like, that's something new. Um, it is brand spanking new, right out the box, follow instructions. Um, so why are you doing a rewrite? I mean, on a book that was awesome, that had a lot of success, and you're like, not awesome enough, let's rewrite this. There were problems that I can't go into with the publisher, and now I've taken my book and I'm re-self-publishing it. And I have to change it just so it's slightly different from the original version. I understand. So instead of, you know, putting on her right shoe first, she's going to put on her left shoe first and then her right shoe. Got it. <laughs> yeah. and that's completely different. It's in the details, people. It's in the details. Literally in contracts as well. <laughs> so if you could write with anyone in the world, who would you be writing with? Um, Stephen King. <laughs> Stephen King? What? Stephen King? I just, I just think it's just yeah, it's automatically going to get people buying your book if Stephen King's on the front cover with your name next to it. Uh, you know, James Patterson did a contest for that to see who would be like, it'd be his name and then another person's name. Yeah. Uh, mm, that was interesting. I wanted to enter, then I remember I can't write well, so I let it go. Um, <laughs> Making a joke on myself, y'all. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that we are finalists for Poet of the Year over here. Yay. But anyway, so you guys know that I was truly a joke because I obviously can write decently. And I'm a yeah. novelist. I would never say that. <laughs> so if you could uh, if you could write a poem about anything, what would it be? I don't know. I've written a lot of different poems. I've started doing children's poems now as well. So I'm trying to get a book together for that. Oh, you want to do illustrations with it? I'm not really good at illustrations. I did a children's book, but I couldn't get anywhere with it because a certain person who I'm not going to name was supposed to do some illustrations and I never did. But if they listen to this, they'll know who they are. <laughs> I think I might know an illustrator. I, mean, I shouldn't say I think I might know. I do know an illustrator who currently needs some work. So, hey. <laughs> You want to give it a go again. And whoever that illustrator is, if she writes a poem about you, don't be like, oh, no, you deserved it. Yeah. Done. I'm assuming you flaked or something, so whatever. She seems like a very nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can I ask, last question about let's make believe. Okay. What is your ultimate thing that you would like to achieve in your career? Um, I'd like to uh, sell a million copies of a book and have it turned into a movie. I know that's cheating, that's two things, isn't it? <laughs> no, you need the million copies to have the book yeah. to turn into a movie. Yeah, yeah, unless you know people. If you know people who know people, then you good. Oof. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I know people. Ooh, but they ain't gonna do nothing for me, I just know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I agree, that sounds awesome. I'd love to sell a million copies of a book. <clears throat> For all y'all listening, that means buy a book. <laughs> it has been an absolute pleasure having you with us. And I'm going to take Jade's last infamous question. It's not really infamous. It's what everyone asks. But, you know, we got to build it up. Because half the time she's feeling it. So uh, her last infamous question would be, where can people find you? Um, I'm on Facebook and it's facebook.com forward slash Amanda Steele Raya. Okay. Amanda has been so much fun. She like answers the questions precisely. Please understand it's like it feels very English. Very, very English. 
there's uh, preparedness. I'm always not fond of that. I'm, I'm not fond of that. <laughs> then there's, there's that whole like on time thing. It's just a lot of things that I find in the English culture that are humorous so far. And then now that I said it, people are going to be like, uh uh, in the comments, that is not what we do. Is it? Is it not though? Is it not though? Think about it. Anyway, you guys, this is Winona, and I am part of the And I Thought Lady, so I'm going to wrap this up. That wisdom. Oh, wait, I forgot. We have charities that we proudly support. So please go to www.andwethought.com. Go to the ladies tab, go down to the middle. And please click on the charities that we probably support so that you can support them as well. Two more things. We have the Thoughtful Book Festival coming up on August 31st and the Experienced Writers Workshop on October 10th and 11th. So we hope that you guys will come out and support us. By the way, that workshop is in Las Vegas. It's coming! Good writing time. Good writing time. Yeah, y'all know what that means. There ain't no writing going on. (laughs) <laughs> so wisdom is all around you you guys if you're open to finding it and accepting it so peace and love you guys from the missing jade and will nona bye bye